thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I'd like to start out with, uh, with Mr. Weinstanley when you're talking about the variety of businesses you have. Uh, do you file separate tax returns? Yes, they all file separate tax returns. Well, why doesn't uh, are you allowed if you have a loss on uh, your uh, Lodge Tech business, your your small software business versus your restaurant? Can you write that loss off against your restaurant? No, they're separate. Well, what happened to business aggregation? Right, the uh, there's a significant administrative burden that goes with running the multiple entities. Okay. separately, and there's value to doing so. So effectively what we're seeing through this administration is a policy to be able to force you uh, to be able to provide that health care. Has that impacted your ability to be able to create jobs? Yes. You're, li you're living in the real world. Uh, you know, we just heard comment that there is no data. Uh, I'll quote that again, that there is no data that small businesses are not hiring as a result of the implementation of the President's Affordable Health Care Act. No effect on job hiring. Is that your experience? No, it's not. Anyone I, else care to comment? No, it's not. I see it in small businesses and large businesses. So businesses aren't hiring because of the Affordable Care Act? I believe it's draining resources from the companies that would otherwise be going to use, use to grow the businesses. Uh, very, very interesting because uh, we aren't dealing with theoretical data. Uh, we're dealing with real life experiences. I appreciate that testimony. Uh, I do, I come from rural Colorado. I'm a small business guy. Uh, do you have any experience, and perhaps uh, the CPAs on the panel can address this the best? Are you seeing insurance cost differences between businesses in rural areas versus urban areas? And what I can speak to is in the state of Colorado, if you punch in a rural zip code uh, for your health care insurance, you're paying a 65% premium compared to people that are living in urban Colorado. Are you seeing those same sorts of circumstances? I'm sorry. I'm going to have to pass that to the insurance person. <laughs> I, I can address that. Uh, that is happening, and it, it does happen because there's less competition. There are fewer facilities in the rural areas, and they – can charge what they want to charge because that's the only hospital, the only emergency room in since, some cases. Since you have a little bit of experience with this, uh, is it a little more typical in these rural areas to see a lower income than we do in, in urban America? Yes, sir. It is. Uh, you know, we hear a lot of talk here in Washington coming out of this administration about income inequality. Uh, but I'm just hearing testimony that the administration, through its policies, are forcing you to cut the incomes of people by reducing their hours. We're hearing that people that live now in rural America who earn less are going to be paying more for what is now law that you must obey and buy insurance. Is that correct? Uh, the simple answer is yes. Simple answer is yes. So... Effectively, what we're seeing is a system that uh, is not affordable, and uh, we can certainly get into the accessibility issues as well. But uh, going back to the aggregation rules, and uh, we're specifically trying to be able to address on this, uh, can anyone on the panel give me a small business guy? I just want to be able to produce my product, to be able to sell, to be able to provide for my family. Can you give me two sentences to be able to define the aggregation rule? Can anyone? A parent subsidiary group where you own 80% of a chain of corporations, a brother-sister corporation where the same five or fewer operate, own 50%, and in conjunction, 80%, and then the affiliated service group rules. Those rules don't necessarily have ownership, but if I provide management services to another business, that will be aggregated. You know, as a small business guy, I'd have to tell you, you're a CPA. That's about as clear as mud, <laughs> uh, Timmy, uh, to, to really to be able to understand that. Uh, how much, you know, when it, we, we've had abundant testimony on this uh, committee. Uh, the rules and regulations are one of the, and this is another one that we're talking about today, are killing jobs in America, killing job hiring prospects in America today when we need to be able to hire people. Uh, how much more is this going to cost small businesses like Mr. Wine Stanley's who are working on a narrow profit margin just to be able to comply with another government mandate? Any idea? 
any time you look at these rules in a situation as complicated as his with different ownership, you're going to have to sit down with a chart. When he cha transfers ownership to children, to other people, you're going to have to go through the chart. You're going to have to ask him who does the management for his different businesses. Does the software company, in fact, do some payroll for the restaurants? Those types of questions. And then you're going to put it all together. Once you reach 50 people, you'll have to know He'll have to comply with the rules, and then he knows which companies in that pot he has to provide minimum essential coverage to the workers for. A lot of money. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.